we will be creating our very own whiteboard today using HTML canvas. Last time I went over some of the basics, you know, drawing lines, shapes, just an introduction to canvas. This time we're really going to be putting it into action. We'll be writing functions, having event listeners, and interacting with the canvas in real time. If you haven't already, I would go back and watch my introduction into HTML Canvas video. It'll be linked either on screen or in the description down below. But here is a very quick example of what we're gonna be building. I've got this on CodePen right now. I'll have that link in the description as well, or I'll have a Git repo version, whichever you'd like. So the idea is that you just click your mouse down, and you can draw so you click and hold and you can draw whatever you want you can clear it which is great change colors here green and i even actually have a color picker as well so you don't just have to use the default so let's go with this nice orange so this is what we're going to be building it'll be a little bit of html and css the css is just for styling these buttons on the side but most of this will be in javascript Let's dive over into the project and get everything set up. Okay, so right now we've just got a basic index.html file. I've linked the style sheet and linked the script tag already. We're going to have a button container with all the buttons and inputs in there. Then we'll also have the canvas element. So we'll do that now. We'll do a div and we'll just make it a class of button container. So we need five buttons. There's the clear button, the black, red, blue, and green. And then there is an additional input, which is the color picker. So we'll just do button and we'll times that by five. It's not exactly the nicest input, but we'll work with it. So we've got clear, black, red, blue, and green. Then we've also got an input of type color. There we go, nice. And I'm just going to add some IDs onto these right now. Oops. We'll use these IDs to target them in the JavaScript. So we'll have clear button, black button. And finally, we have got the color picker button. Great. Then all that's left to do here is add the canvas. Again, give it an ID. We'll just call this my canvas. Give it a width. We'll actually change the width in JavaScript, but for now, we're going to give it a width of 500 and a height of 500. And I'll also add in quickly, just so you can see it, uh, border, one pixel, solid, red. I just like adding this border in, just so people can see. There's the canvas. We've got our buttons. And let's style it. So what we're going to do is have position relative on the body. The, the button container will be position fixed or absolute. And we'll put that on the left-hand side. You can put it on the bottom, the top, wherever you like. Let's go and do that. We'll do body position relative, and then we'll target the class button container position absolute top 50% and left zero transform translate y minus 50%. Great. I'm also going to make sure that this has a height of 100 view height and a width of 100 view width. And a few more styles just to tidy things up. Just to get rid of some of the basic stylings. Nice. So that's kind of in the center but I want it as a column so we're going to do some display flex here flex direction column there 
There we go. We've got some basic buttons. I'm also going to target the button just for a little bit more styling. I want pointer, uh, cursor to be a pointer. Just so you know that you can click on it. Background, I want as white, I think. Outline, none. Border, one pixel, solid. And we'll just go with black for now. Great. And we'll give it a bit of padding. 10 pixels. That might be a bit too large. And also, the input doesn't change, does it? So let's change the input. Let's give it a padding of 10 pixels. I don't think that's going to work, actually. No, I didn't think it was. <laughs> I think it's probably better to set the height, maybe. Height to 40 pixels, width to 80 pixels. So that's a bit bigger. Maybe use outline rather than border. And then this one I can also put down here. Yeah, I think that works kind of nicely. A little bit off, maybe. Let's put the... Yeah, perfect. And you know what? Don't even need to do this. We'll do that. There we go. Nice and tidy. Some CSS. We'll do one more thing. Just on hover, we'll put the font weight to bold, for example. You can do this however you want. But we've got basic button layout. So we can't use the CSS to increase the size of the canvas because that distorts how we draw on the canvas. What we're going to have to do is do it in JavaScript. So we're going to create our canvas element, our context element. There's going to be a few event listeners one's for the buttons and one for the a few for the canvas itself. So let's do that now. Const my canvas. By ID. And it was called my canvas. And then we just do the usual of const context equals my canvas dot get context. And we'll do it into D. I want to set the my canvas dot height equal to the window dot inner height. Yes. And then we'll just duplicate this down. This becomes width and this becomes inner width. It's a little bit of overflow now. Oops. Typo there. A little bit of overflow now, but that's fine. We can actually get rid of the style tag i think now as well just since it takes up the whole screen and we can get rid of this height and width just to keep things a little tidier so the three event listeners we need for the canvas it's going to be mouse down mouse up and mouse move i'm going to create a helper variable as well so let's give this let drawing equal false So what's going to happen is when you do mouse down, drawing is going to be true. And then when you do mouse up, drawing will become false again. Then when you have mouse move, if it's true, you'll have the drawing on the screen. So my canvas dot add event listener. I'll do mouse down. Drawing equals true. I will just duplicate that mouse up. Drawing equals false. And then we'll do mouse move. But this is going to be more than just drawing. We're going to have to do something special. So along with knowing that the mouse is down and up, we kind of need to know where the mouse is. So I'm going to create a function called init. And I'm also going to create two more variables. Uh, we'll call this position position x 
and position y. And what's gonna we're gonna use this to find out where the mouse is when we first press down. And when we first press down, that's gonna update these positions. Then when we're moving the mouse, we're gonna update them again. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So we'll need to take an event. And we'll do init e and pause position x equals so we'll do e dot offset x and the same for y. Nice. But nothing's happening. We're not drawing. That's because we haven't got any sort of drawing function. So let's create a drawing function. Function draw. And that's what's going to get called here. We're going to call draw on the mouse move. And we've got our context. We need to begin the path. Find out where we are. And that's with position X and Y. We're going to do a line two. And that will be your event from the mouse move. And then we'll update the X and Y after we've closed the path. So again, we'll pass E in here. And we've got CTX start begin path. So we're starting our drawing. We'll do CTX dot close path. And we'll also update position X equals to E dot offset X and Y as well. And then within the path, we're just going to do CTX dot move to position X and position Y. Then we'll do CTX dot line to E dot offset X and E dot offset Y. So let's have a look. Does this start working? No, because I've missed something very vital. CTX dot stroke. It is good, but my mouse up doesn't seem to be firing. Ah, again, I've made a rookie mistake. So what we need to do, actually, we need to initiate before we start drawing. And then draw, we actually need to check if we are allowed to draw. That's the whole point of this drawing variable. So let's just do an if drawing. And then inside, we'll paste that code again. So now I've got mouse over, nothing is happening. Mouse down, I'm drawing, mouse up, and I stop drawing. So we've got a really basic whiteboard working now, which is brilliant. That did not take many lines of code, but we want to add a little bit more functionality, don't we? This clear button, we want the black, red, blue, and green, and even the color picker to work as well. So let's start doing that. I'll just create a comment, buttons down here. So I want const black button equals document dot. This is why we used IDs as well, just to make things a little bit easier. And we call it black button. And we can copy this down because there was black, red, blue, green. We also need the clear and the color picker. So we'll do clear button. And this was color picker input, I believe. Color picker, nice. So we've got our buttons. Now, then we just need event listeners. We'll do the clear one first, really simple. So we've got the clear button, so add event listener. And we want to do it on click. When we click, we just want to do a simple ctx.clear rect. So we're starting at the top and we're going for the my canvas dot width and then my canvas dot height. Really simple for the clear one. Let's do some drawing. Clear. Nice.
And these buttons are all going to be pretty similar now. But I want to add a little bit more. So what we need to do is just do ctx dot stroke style and set that equal to black is zero zero zero. But I also want to make sure the color picker value is the same. So I just want to do value equals this again. And if we copy this down for red. I'll just show that this works for red. So we got red. It's not working. <laughs> ah, I did not call it input. Color picker input. Color picker input. There we go. Red, black, red, black. And let's just quickly duplicate these two for green and blue. I always get this the wrong way around. And then green is F in the middle, isn't it? R yeah, RGB. Yeah. Let's double check. I misspelled green. There we go. Okay, so we've added the green, blue, red, black. Got the clear. They all work nicely. I really cannot spell tonight, can I? Stroke. 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 There we go. Okay. So we got black, red, green, blue. It is stroke style now. Got the color picker value. These update. That is not. That's a very bright green. And yeah, works nicely. The only issue now is that if I change colors randomly, it's not updating this. We need one more event listener and then we are done. And that is the input color picker. We want to listen for a change event. Have the E here. We don't need this value anymore. And this becomes e.target.value. So let's update this to a salmon -y, pinky, red. I am terrible with colors. And that is how to build a HTML canvas whiteboard. Pretty simple, a lot of really event listeners. The major parts really are the mouse down, mouse up, and mouse move with the initial function to set the X and Y where your mouse is, and then the drawing function to say where you're gonna move the line to. Really, really simple. The rest is just to make it a little bit nicer to use with the clear button and picking your own styles. Now, if you want to take this a little bit further, have some more practice and try and make this your own, here's a few ideas that you might wanna try. You could try and implement a size of the pen so that would be stroke width. You can try and have a slider maybe to increase or decrease the size. That would be really cool. It would also be nice if you could make this work on mobile. Let me know if you've got any questions down below. I'll have the link to the repo or the code pen in the description if you need to check the code yourself. I do live code streaming over on twitch.tv forward slash cdev010. If you wanna check me out and maybe laugh at the amount of mistakes I make, that's totally up to you. Hopefully I will see you there. If not, hope you all have a good day and I'll catch you later.